Welcome to another episode of Culinary School Stories, the weekly podcast that is dedicated to sharing the stories of people around the globe whose lives have been influenced, impacted, touched, and or enriched, for good or for bad, from their culinary school experience. Host, thanks for joining us today. You are an important part of this show where we ask the question, what's your culinary school story? So now, without any further delay, let's meet today's guest. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for another episode of the Culinary School Stories podcast, a food media network production. My guest today is a graduate of Johnson & Wales University's North Miami campus and has a great culinary school story to share with all of us. And having attended school as an international student, he is going to share that unique perspective with us all as well. And with that said, it is my pleasure to introduce today's guest, Christopher Terry. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Dr. Colin Rose. How are you? Excellent. Thanks for joining us. So excited to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Yes, it has been how many years? Like four years? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, and I've been following you on social media, and I know you've been doing some great things, which I'm hoping we're going to get to in this, in this talk so you can share it with the, you know, the audience as well. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start right out at the beginning. How was the journey to attend Johnson & Wales University? What brought you there? What made you want to go to culinary school? Kind of take us through that first part. Um, well, from I was 17 years of age, um, culinary has always been the career um, that I wanted um, to get into, to be honest. And I attended the Antiguan Barbuda the Hospital to Train Institute. Um, in Antigua, I obtained an associate's degree. And from there, I wanted to broaden my horizons. I was thinking, you know, um, I, I need something more. Uh, where can I go and get that level of education, culinary skills, and also that management uh, part of things? And I did some research, and I found Johnson & Wales University as being uh, one of the top universities for culinary um, in the United States. And I did my research and I just fell in love with the school. I said, especially seeing that it was based there. One, one of the campuses were based in Miami. It was a lot more closer to home. So I was able to, it was an easy choice for me, I should say. Easy choice for me to say, okay, let's go to Johnson & Wales. I, um, I looked up different chefs that, were, that went there also. I've been told about the, the, the instructors in terms of the knowledge that they have and everything else. So I said, you know what, let me go and try to gain some of that knowledge also. Great, great. Take us to that first day when you got to campus. You know, you're probably excited and maybe a little nervous and, you know, probably don't know what to expect unless you visited the campus in previous. So what was going through your mind? What were you thinking? Take us to that first day. No, I didn't visit the campus before because, to be honest, I wanted to go to the Culinary Institute of America. So I visited their campus, <laughs> um, but to be honest, in New York, in New York, yes, Hyde Park. Okay. So to be honest, I re as I said, I felt in love with Johnson and Wales. So Culinary Institute of America was already out of the question. And then also financial, you know, as we know, CIA is pretty uh, costly, especially as an international student. Um, so Johnson and Wales, I did visit the campus. It was my first time. I remember um, I came in on a late flight. Uh, direct out of Antigua. No, it was from Texas because I went to Texas to do a Texas Beef Council certification because I'm also a pit master. So um, I left from there and went straight over to North Miami. And, you know, the first day it was, yes, you were nervous. You know, you're going to a school. Um, I was actually one of the first students to be there. So it was empty. Uh, most international students would arrive a bit earlier than normal. So um, you know, it was exciting. I was like, you know, the school looks amazing. I was walking around to the different labs and peeping through the glass. And, <laughs> you know, I was like, wow, you know, look at the equipment that they have in here. Look how clean it is. You know, you just felt as though that you were in royalty. Like, wow, I'm going to come here and tomorrow I'm going to be the biggest chef. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that's the feeling that it gave you. Great, great. And then what was your first lab that you had to go did you go to lab or did you go to academics first no i choose to do i yeah i did labs first um i cannot remember the class that i think it was with chef Narudu, professor Narudu. Okay. 
Yes, I think that was one of that my was dining room or beverage. Or... Dining room. I think it was dining room. Yes, that was my first. Yes, it was my first lab. That one. It, it was good. Um, Professor Naudu. Wow, information. He has a wealth of knowledge, especially in wines. And you know, I would like to thank him also because he also pushed me to do the WSAT um, level, which I did level two. Um, with him, so you know it was very, it was very, very good. Labs, labs were excited. To be honest, unfortunately, we had to wake up at seven o'clock. <laughs> we get to labs at seven o'clock, so we had to wake up early. But you know, I think that was part of the discipline. Also, that's why it was done like that. You know, discipline. Hey, you have a seven o'clock lab. You have to be up by a certain time. You know, take a shower, get your breakfast, get and get to class on time because that 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 is the real world. And I think that's what John Snow Wears was trying to give to their students. Hey, this is this is how it works in the real world. You have a seven to one lab and then you have a one to seven, just like you have a morning shift and an evening shift. Sure. It, it was pretty awesome. Now going back to that WSET, tell us a little bit about that. What is that? Wine spirits? That's what it stands for? Yes, it's a wine and spirits uh, certification um, that I did with uh, Professor Nawidu. Uh, it was very intense. I would give you that. It was something that you had to study. We had to taste different types of wines. We tasted maybe about 20 different bottles. So we understood what it is that we are tasting, what it is that we are learning. And Professor Narudu really drilled us in that because he wanted to see his students succeed sure. at the end of the day. Now, that is the Wine Spirits Education Trust, I think. And that has, that's, in, that's international, so that was opened up to the public, not just Johnson & Wales students? Correct. No, it wasn't just for Johnson & Wales students. It was also opened up to the public. I think we had two persons from the public come and join us. Um, we, we had uh, one, two, I think it was about seven to eight of us in the class. And there's different, is there different levels with that? Yes, you have up to, yeah, I did my research the other day, and you have, I think you have up to level three. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Um, don't hold me to that. Um, but I know level one is the more beginner's level, which in Professor Nowdy was like, you guys don't need that. Let's just go to level two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's the encouragement that you needed. Um, you know, he knowing to himself, okay, he's pushing you and saying, hey, listen, you don't need that. You, you are on to the next level. You know, you feel good about yourself and you want to push and do a bit better. And I obtained the certification with merit, actually. Um, I was surprised when I saw the certificate with merit. I was like, oh, because it was a pretty intense exam, to be honest. I'm going to be honest. It was very intense. Now, that's something that many people may not realize. They think culinary school just cooking. But here you have a dining room class that you had, and there's outside certifications that have to do with wine and dining room that you can also get. So it really helps round out your um, education. Did you have any of those type of classes when you had your associate's degree, uh, the original associate's degree back in Antigua? Um, we did, but at very minimal because it was more geared towards um, hands-on approach in the, in the kitchen. So we did have a bit, but not as much as detailed as how it was in Johnson & Wales. In Antigua, it was more of cooking a lot more cooking yes we did we we learned the basics knife cuts um costing a bit of costing not that much um but it was more hands-on to be honest so you learned how to handle yourself in the kitchen that's good and now you already had this experience when you came into the lab did you find that helpful did you find it a hindrance i mean were the other students in the class as experienced as you or did you find them more novices to be honest, yes, I did have that ex that experience of other more than other students, because um, I was working for seven years in the industry prior to attending Johnson and Wales. But at the end of the day, I came into the class with a very open mind, because we are all here to learn. So it was a case that I had to whatever I knew before, whatever I thought I knew, I had to act like I didn't know and listen and. I had to be able to be taught. So, you know, I took the knowledge and everything. So what I had in my head went out the window at the end of the day. I wanted to learn what's happening here and now. Great. Now, thinking about that 
two years that you had, all those classes. What was your favorite class and what was your worst class and why? My favorite class, uh, it has to be your class, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the reason, the reason why is because I was not good on maths. Um, I'm terrible, well, was terrible um, on maths. And I know in terms- You'll have to tell them what the class is first, because they may think it's like pastry or dining room or- <laughs> Oh, it was food costing. <laughs> class was food costing. So it was a very, I w for me, it was an intense class, to be honest, because I always try, if you remember, I always try to keep at least a minimum of a B or B plus average. So um, I always try to get good grades first and foremost. And I applied myself in that class, reason being because I know in terms of becoming a chef, you need to know food costs. You need to know your spending. You need to know amount of money that you're putting on the plate, how much you're going to sell it for your wastage, et cetera, et cetera. So I took that class. I was actually looking forward to that class um, a lot in my first year, but unfortunately I, I, did, I couldn't get it until I did my second year. But I really paid attention to that class because I knew that it was needed. And if you remember, Chef, I always used to come to you and ask you different questions um, in terms of food costs. You told me about your YouTube link, which actually helped helped me at the time and it still helps me to today if I forget something I just go on your YouTube link and I do find um video where you explain about food costs and yield and everything so yeah that that was my favorite class the hard and I'm going to be honest I think it was the hardest class too favorite and hardest class but I manage <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's food cost menu planning class, and it is an important class. I always start out by telling the new students that, you know, you can be the best chef in the world, but still go broke. Correct. You know, it's not necessarily about cooking because it's a business and you have costs and you have to manage those costs, that cycle of cost control. But it is one of the most challenging classes because it does have that math yes. component. But I'm, I don't often hear that that's people's favorite class. So I'm glad to hear that because I do think it is a value class and the the YouTube channel uh, that you reference that that's a good point and I'll make sure I put that in the show link because it, it's a video that I created on how to do a recipe cost card and in some other menu engineering that I've posted to my YouTube channel and I found it to be very you know uh, beneficial to many people out there in the industry. I think that one video you're referencing now, last time I checked at like 120,000 views. So <laughs> there's a lot of people out there that really need that material. In the, in, and I've had comments saying, you know, I run a food truck or I run a business and, and that's been helpful in costing. So I'll link that because hey, any of the listeners out there want to find that video and, and get those forms, it, it is available for free out there. And I implore, I implore them to have a look at the video. It, it really helps. It really helps, and I want to thank you <laughs> um, publicly for, you know, ha one having the patience um, to teach us because I remember a lot of students just could not get that class, um, especially with the stimulation and everything. And you know, I would like to thank you for pushing all of us and for us getting through the, that class. It was it has really helped me um, as I have progressed in my career. Oh, great! Well, I appreciate that. How about your worst class? <laughs> the worst class? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what is the worst class? Maybe you didn't have one. I don't want to put you on the spot, but if you did have one, I'd like to understand or let the listeners know why it was hard or why it was your worst. Statistics, I think, was the worst class. Again, numbers, maths. I just, it, it, it was, whew, <laughs> it was a challenge. I think it was the worst, but um, I always say, once you apply yourself, if you apply yourself to anything that you're doing, you can make it because I started in that class, I think with maybe a C plus and I ended that class with a B plus. So in the beginning, it was hard. Yes, it was the worst. To be honest, it was just so challenging. It took up a lot of my time not compared to other classes, but I applied myself. I wanted to learn it. I wanted to get a, great, a, a good grade <laughs> at the end of the day. So. I applied myself. So yes, it was the worst, but no matter what you think is the worst, you can always make it the best. Yeah, I agree. Good. 
Let's transition now to extracurricular activities, because I know you were involved in a lot of the competition clubs and you know things like that, and you actually won some and you got to travel. So maybe take, the, take us down that road and share with the listeners um, some of those things that you were involved in that they could get involved in. Well, so that that is um that, that's going down memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> so while attending Johnson and Wales, uh, myself, Arthur Patrick, and Mika C4, we decided, hey, Decca Culinary Competition is coming up. How about we come together? Because Arthur is from Trinidad, um, I'm from Antigua, Mikael is from Antigua, and we say, hey, how about we come together, create a Caribbean team, go and represent Johnson and Wales, and. You know, we came together with um, Professor Flader, uh, Chef Flader, and he, he also was um, someone who, who helped us a lot. Um, he was a great professor also. I also had him, I think, in advanced dining room, and he was our trainer for that Deco culinary competition. And our first competition, we went to Orlando, um, just up the road. <laughs> right, so we went to Orlando and it was we were nervous it was very nervous it was something that it's different because i'm i'm very familiar with competitions i've done many 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 competitions um in antigua um puerto rico cooking competitions i also did barbecue competitions because i'm also very i love barbecuing um i had a barbecue team where we traveled between puerto rico and tennessee winning many Covington awards and medals and everything um, I also have YouTube videos uh, um, about that, uh, some of our documentaries from Puerto Rico and Tennessee. So competition is in me. I love competition, but every time you go to a different competition, it's a different feeling. So I always get nervous and I do like getting nervous because it really brings out the best inside of you. So I remember we were in the room and then we were supposed to be doing up our timeline. And again, it goes back to cost it. <laughs> Um, because I didn't get your class the first year. None of us got your class the first year. So guess what? We didn't know what to do. So we actually just, quite frankly, I'm going to be honest, we actually, um, quote unquote, made up a figure for that timeline that we had to do. And I don't remember, I can't remember seeing the judges' score sheet for the theoretical part of it, but I'm pretty sure we failed it. <laughs> 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 especially the costing part um pretty sure that we failed it but one thing that we had was um unity we worked together as a team um so going into the kitchen it was a case where we worked together as a team and created something amazing that allowed us to win the overall competition so that was our first um competition that we won and like hey why not go back and defend it um, the following year, um, which, you know, we started to consider ourselves the island boys, <laughs> <laughs> seeing that we we're from the Caribbean and everything. So uh, we went back the following year to Washington, um, D.C. And to be honest, Chef, I'm going to tell you, when we came back, some of the competitors that were there the year before, they were shocked to see us back because they know how good that we came the first year. So they were like, wow, them again, you know. Um, but that year... That year was, I would say, we were very confident going in that year. We were super confident. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get much practices in. I think we did only like three, four practices because, you know, some persons had to work and schedule in. And it was two teams. So, you know, it was a kind of back and forth thing. So we only got the, the most, I would say, was four practices. But again, Chef, what we had was teamwork. And that's something I want the listeners and chefs both um, present and also um, future, teamwork makes the dream work. And that's the truth. Because that day, I remember we were in Washington and we got the outline, what we would have to do and everything. And they said we had to break down um, a chicken, fabricate a whole chicken. That's not a problem. But then we started to do a bit more research and we said the oyster. We are like, the oyster? what is the oyster so we started to research what the oyster is and we'll all three of us were looking at each other like man we don't we never knew that we don't even know how to get into side of that i remember we walked down to walmart walk 10 minute walk and we bought a whole chicken shop that the day before the competition and right there in our rooms we learned to fabricate 
a chicken effectively you know taking out that oyster it was amazing we to this day we still talk you know Arthur and I speak a lot so we still speak about it and we just laugh about it because we can't believe that we were able to practice that the night before execute it the day after flawlessly and once again we won the competition defending our title making Johnson and Wales North Miami campus um once again the top winners and we were very proud you know and, and i know that the university was proud of us also sounds like it was more than just teamwork you were kind of resourceful there to go out and be able to do that and then fabricate it in your hotel room <laughs> in the hotel room we actually bought um we actually bought a small cutting board also <laughs> <laughs> and we did yeah we did that right in the hotel room we did our our full sheet Again, well, we had the costing class, so we knew a little bit about costing. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so we did it better that time. Um, fabricated the chicken, broke it down. You know, we all had hands inside of it. And I think it took us that night. It was, we were diligent for about four hours solid without any distractions or anything. You know, just focused in on the competition. What we're going to do, how we're going to do it. We're just talking word about, hey, guys, this is how it's going to go, you know. Everybody had the input. We came together, put it together, walked in the kitchen the next day. And I'm going to be honest, Chef, if we spoke, if we spoke 50 words amongst ourselves, we spoke a lot because that's how well we worked. It was just like, I got that. Okay, I have that. Yeah, good. Okay, plating. All right, Chris, let's go. Put it together. You're focused and it's choreographed and you know everyone knows what to do and just execute. Yeah, it was just, it, it, it was flawless. It was like, because we already knew what we were going to do. You know, Mick, Mikhail was responsible for like doing his, um, the sauces, um, the vegetables. Otto was responsible for breaking down um, the chicken, cutting up, making purees and this kind of things. And I was responsible for like the sauces and the cooking methods of things. And then finally the plated. So it was just, we spoke about it and we executed it. That was it. What a great experience. Must have been awesome when you heard them announce that you were the winner it, it was it, it was lovely is um excitement that you cannot imagine is you know we wanted that thrill you know we were like the next year we're like i wonder if we could go back seeing that we have finished from school if they would allow us <laughs> but, you know it was, it was the thrill of the competition it was lovely so tell us about where you've been now. What what do you what you, since you left school and you know what did you how have you been doing and and you know where are you now? Oh great. Um well for my left Johnson and Wales, I went to Ocean Reef Club. I worked there um for a year and also Cards on Golf Club. So it was one property, two different clubs. So I was working both, you know, just trying to gain that international experience as much as possible, you know, just soak up everything. Um, from there, I got a job offer with Sandals. I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with Sandals um, in Barbados, where I, uh, I came in as a sous chef for the American restaurant, um, seeing that I had that knowledge. And then I quickly went up to the French kitchen. Um, it was a French restaurant. And, you know, there's where I actually shone, meaning in the case just like what I was preaching before teamwork, I made sure that my team was on the same level as everyone else, meaning I went and taught them. So the, the, my books from Johnson & Wales, I actually brought with me and I actually taught my staff. I helped my staff to understand different sauces, different knife cuts, different cooking methods, um, you know, behavior of the kitchen, because I believe that if it is that you have a team and everyone is on the same page, not because I'm the chef means that I need to be above you. No, I want everybody on the same level as me because at the end of the day, we're going to make that team effort, right? Something greater than anyone could imagine. So there's no weak link. There's always some, there's always strong points in a team. If somebody's weak in something, there's someone to pick up that weakness. And that's what quite frankly makes a team. So, you know, I've been very proud of that. Uh, my staff, they have thanked, thanked me many times, many times over, hey, chef, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, and, you know, I feel very proud for that, that, you know, they're able to learn something. They're able to gain some level of knowledge when it comes to culinary and, you know, push themselves at the end of the day because that's what it's all about. We can't keep the knowledge to ourselves. 
And then from there, um, I actually decided to come back home to Antigua, um, where I got an executive sous chef position at the Hammer Cove uh, Resort. Uh, so that's where I am currently, because uh, I just returned home a few months ago. So that's where I am currently. Great. What's your future plans? Future plans. Um, well, some of my future plans is to, well, first and foremost, is obviously to gain that um, title as an executive chef, but I want to gain that title as an executive chef also to open up something new, um, new hotel, new restaurant, and be able to bring my staff in, to be honest, because I've worked in many places. I've, as I mentioned before, I've, I've been in Antigua. That's my home um, country. I've been in Florida where I did short stints with um, Chef Brandon Berger, um, Miami Iceman, and also I was a private chef. Um, for an NFL player uh, down at the sunny side, sunny Isles. <laughs> I can't remember, but down there I was a private chef there. Ocean Reef Club, Cardstone Golf Club. I worked in Puerto Rico where I opened up a smokehouse for a client. I also did a revamp of a restaurant. I did also England. I worked in England at Le Toll Booth restaurant in, um, that's in Essex. Very, very nice restaurant where I learned um, a lot. Worked in Barbados and, you know, now back in Antigua at the end of the day, after this, I'm looking to gain a, a higher position, executive chef, corporate chef, where I'll be able to bring in my own people that I've worked with over the years to create something dynamic. And also um, in the future, which I already have working on, is to have a smokehouse, to open up a proper smokehouse um here in antigua and barbuda so that, that that's something that i'm really looking forward to using the skills and knowledge that i have from smoking and different competitions um smoking techniques a lot of people just think that smoking or putting the brisket and put no it's it's it, it's a timely thing it's, you have to put in the brisket the correct wood chips the correct temperature correct timing know when to take it out wrap it put it back in, let it rest. So, you know, I have the passion for things like that. And I have a passion for plating too. I don't know if you have seen some of my plates, Chef, but I think that um, my plates are very unique. It's never the same. It's always different. And, and, and the thing for that is my creative mind because I kind of think of a plating at this moment and execute it the next. I have to plate right there, right then. So if I tell you, okay, I'm going to put the sauce that way, chances are, I'm not going to put the sauce that way when it's actually time to plate because the vision is different. And that's something that I like about myself that I'm able to surprise myself also and get excited. It's like, wow, ew, that's amazing. You know, so food is exciting. I, I just love it. It's just, it makes me excite, excited. Well, you're an artist in the moment. You know, yeah, you're inspired by the dish and at the time and what's going on at that point. It's not a paint by number. You're not planning it too far in advance. You're, that's where the correct. art of culinary art comes in. Correct, correct. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that barbecue a little bit more? Because you are a pit master. And, and what is your website? You have a, a YouTube and stuff that maybe people want to check that out? Yes, it's on um, YouTube. Um, one of the links is Smoking Grillers Journey to Puerto Rico. And it was also Smoking Grillers' journey to Tennessee. So that was, no, I was saying um, Smoking Grillers was a barbecue com um, team that I started back in 2012. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, I started when I was working at the Jumbi Bay Resort in um, Antigua. And they had a competition here. I was like, hey, I want to go and do smoking because I just like competitions. So every time I heard a competition, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. <laughs> you know, so... I went into the competition, did a little, little bit of research, um, and I actually got second place for the best ribs. And I came, I think it was third overall. And the winner, they were offering the winner to go to Puerto Rico. Uh, but what Jumbi Bay did, because we did, you know, we did pretty well. They said, hey, we're going to send you to Puerto Rico also. You know, so the, the company really looked out for us then. And uh, from there, I went to the competition and that's where I actually learned what smoking is because I went into that competition very confident thinking what I did in Antigua was the best. It wasn't. I came 37 
out of 38 or 39 competitors, so second to last, I was like, wow, really? So the next year, um, I got a new team. Um, I did a whole revamp, got a proper team. I had a PRO, I had a model, I had a cinematographer, I had a videographer, I had two cooks, I had an entertainer. So I had a full team, uh, went out, gained sponsorship, everything. Went back to Puerto Rico, learned the basics for the smoking, asked questions, got together with different chefs. And um, I remember Chef Dirk Troop. He was the chef at the Old Sheraton in Old San Juan. And he was the one that actually taught me on the spot how to do brisket the correct way. And uh, myself and my PR and entertainer, we actually did it right there. I remember we woke up at one o'clock in the morning and started because we had to turn in brisket. I think brisket turning was at three or four o'clock in the afternoon. So we were up early, early, early um, smoking our brisket. Chef Dirk Troop, he was teaching us and telling us the correct word. He actually introduced me to mesquite wood, which mesquite is just my absolute favorite because it gives that, it gives that meat, that kind of sweet flavor to it. So, um, you know, I thank him for that. I learned from him. I learned from um, another pit master a year um, later also in terms of um, smoking pork butts and chicken and, you know, these kind of things. So um, I was thankful for that. And uh, on top of my own research, we managed that year, I think, to come 11th. <laughs> uh, we did very awesome um, that year. The year after, I managed to come 7th being awarded the we won the best chicken thighs we got second in pork butt and fourth in brisket and mark you this is out of like 41 competitors so we did we did not do too bad ourselves and you know that's something that i'm very proud of to this day it's it's still in awe you know young people we're able to do such something on such a large scale and that's something that i want to tell a lot of the listeners, no matter how young or old you are, once you put some, once you put something to your mind, or once you put it to your mind, just execute. You can do it. Yeah. Just get the right resources. It may take a while. Some persons it takes a year. Some persons it takes ten years. But hey, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you know, focus on what you are doing and what you want, and you'll be successful. Good point. Uh, let's talk about certification now. What do you think about certification and um, American Culinary Federation? There's other places, like we mentioned, we set. Can you talk a little bit about certification from your point of view? Certification, very important. Very, very, very important. Uh, last year, October, I decided to do my certification um, as a chef de cuisine uh, from American Culinary Federation. Um, and I would like to thank. Um, Chef Jeff for assisting me in that. Also, I would like to thank uh, Chef John Bell. He also assisted me in that. And Chef Gary. The, these were chefs that have seen me, especially Chef Jeff. He has seen my progress from since age 17. And he has really encouraged me and helped me along the way. And I told him, you know, he has always helped me, no matter what, always through my whole culinary years. And I told him that I was looking to go, I want to do a certification. And he's like, you know, that's an excellent choice. And, you know, I'm like, yeah, I want to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> so I immediately, I immediately just went and did it. To be honest, I got prepared with Chef John Bell. I went to his school in Orlando and did some practices. He taught me what he knew. Perfect. You know, everything was to the teat and I just executed it and I think certification is very important because to help you to get to that next step, it's needed. Not to say that you can't get to the next step without it, but at the end of the day, it's easier and persons will recognize you more. And that's one of the reasons why I did that certification. The main reason is for me to get that international exposure. Um, hopefully one of these days I'm able to get that international position where I'm an executive chef or corporate chef um, somewhere else um, in the world. But I also believe in taking my time and taking it step by step. Like I you know you have persons that will just leave school and they jump and go straight to an executive chef role. 
And I just asked myself, you know, how, why? Why would you do something like that before going through the stages to get to that level? Some persons make it, while others, and I think that the majority, they fail because they miss crucial steps leading up to that map. You know, so I am a strong believer of that. I could have been, I've said it many times, could have been an executive chef years ago, but was I ready? No, I'm not ready. Well, I wasn't. I'm ready now, but I wasn't at the time. You know, so I'd rather take my time and build than to jump into something and fail. You understand? And I think that's one thing I would like for our listeners to, um, another thing I like for listeners to take away, take your time. Take your time. You finish culinary school at age 20, 27. What well, doesn't matter what age you finish. If you're not ready, don't do it. Take your time. Go through the levels. Comic cook, demi, chef de party, junior sous, sous chef, executive shoe. Get up to the level. So when you reach up there, you stay up there. Don't jump from a comic cook to an executive chef or a head chef or whatever. Because when you reach up there, there are going to be people that need you that have gone through the necessary steps and will outshine you. And it will make you look as if you don't know what you're doing. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, Chef. <laughs> no, I think you got to go out there and get all those tools and keep collecting them for your toolbox so that you're better when you get to that place and you, know, you have that repertoire. I often think of it as like you know, medical school. When you get out of medical school, you're not really a doctor, even though technically you are. You still have to go do your residency. You have to go and learn those skills and get that practical experience before you're going to go open up your you know, your your practice Correct. itself and it's kind of the same way with a chef your culinary school teaches you a lot of the foundations the basics gives you some good networking then you go out there and you perfect those skills that's that, that that's 100 percent correct so you know i'm a strong believer of that um just work your way up and you know that, that's about it but the certification is is very important um acf is very is a very good institution that's the american culinary federation and I would like to thank them um, for accommodating me, for me to do my certification in Orlando. I was told that many persons, it's, it's a very hard level, chef de cuisine and also executive chef, it's a very hard level to pass. Um, so I was pretty surprised after I finished my practical at how well I did. And I, I owe that again to Chef Bell, Chef Gary, to, that, 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 that assisted me. Um, and Chef Jeff, definitely, that assisted me on that path and showed me what I needed to do and do it the correct way and everything. The certification is important. It's hard, but guess what? Nothing good comes easy. Yeah, that's a congratulations to you and a big you know, hats off because I used to be an evaluator. I know what goes, people have to go through for those, those certifications, those, those tests out there, those practicals and the pressure that's, that's there as well. So yes. that's a big thing. And that's um, good advice all around that you've been giving out there. And I want to see if we can build on that. What advice would you give to somebody that wanted to pursue uh, a career in our industry or that wanted to go to culinary school? If someone came to you and asked you, like, you know, what advice would you give to that person? Uh, my advice would be very straightforward, Chef, um, because a lot of persons, and I've seen it um, while I attended the university, they think coming to culinary school, oh, it's easy. Oh, I'm going to be, you're going to go culinary school today. I'm going to be a chef tomorrow. Nope, 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 nope. You have to work for that. It's very hard. If you don't have the patience, first and foremost, if you don't have the time, if you cannot sacrifice, and that is the key one right there. If you cannot sacrifice, it is not the field for you. Because, you know, getting up to that level, you're going to be, you know, as a comic cook, you work an average shift, eight to five, seven to four, three to 11. As you start to move up the ranks, you're speaking about seven to seven, 7 to 11, I want to meet 7 to 11, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. And, you know, you have to come back. So it takes a lot of sacrifice. It takes a lot of discipline. So if you don't have these elements and the attitude, I, all, I always tell my staff everywhere that I've been um, through my travels, if you don't have the attitude, can't help you. We can teach you a skill, but you have to have the correct attitude. You have to want it. You have to want to be a chef. You have to understand the meaning of being a chef. If you can't have the sacrifices, if you don't have the discipline, if you can't be taught, because that's another thing, because I know you have experience in chef. You have some person that you try to teach them something like, oh, I know, I know. No, that's not the right attitude. Even if you know, because I can tell you a story, chef. When I went to the tall booth, 
uh, I went there, I think, for two, two to three months um, to do a stage. And the chef asked me, do you know how to make a stock, veal stock? I said, no, chef. He's like, what? You're a chef and don't know how to make it? I said, would you like to show me, chef? And it's not because I didn't know how to make it. I just wanted to see how he did it. You understand? So it's, imagine if I said, oh, I know. He would have said, okay, since you know, go and do it. And then maybe I would have missed a, a, a step. And he said, okay, but I thought you knew. You know what I'm saying? So it's always good to say, you know, all the time you have to say you don't know. But if you're uncertain and, you're not, and you want to learn, you know, sometimes it's wise to keep quiet and try to learn. Try to learn from who's trying to teach you at the end of the day, whether it's right or wrong. Because if it's wrong, you will know what not to do <laughs> at the end of the day. So um, that's the advice that I would give to anyone wanting to join um, the culinary field. They'll think, especially in a lot of persons think, oh, um, chefs make money. Yeah, we make money when we are at the levels. We are at a high level. But starting out, we don't make anything. You know, we, I, I think persons starting out do it mainly for the love of cooking. To be honest, you have to have the love. You have to have the passion. You have to have is a passion because you can love to cook. Because there are many persons out there that love to cook. But do you have the passion? Do you get excited when you get when you do a plated? You know, sometimes chef, I would do a plating and I would get so crazy excited, and the person in my kitchen would look at me like, "What's wrong with you, chef?" Like, no, I'm, it's just exciting. You know, look at the place, excited. And if you don't have that kind of passion, you wouldn't make it. You would not make it. Yeah, you bring in the art to life right on that plate. And that's what's the inspiration. So now that you've had perspective, you've been out of school, you've been traveling all around, would you do it all again? Thinking about the cost, the time, everything, would you, would you change anything or would you do it just like you did at culinary school? I would not change anything. Um, reason being, you know, it, it helped me to be the person that I am today because um, truth be told, Chef, I actually worked seven years prior to attending John Snow Wales um, just to attend John Snow Wales. So I worked to attend John Snow Wales. So um, all my savings, everything, when I went to John Snow Wales in 2014, went straight inside. So I was left with zero dollars and zero cents. So that's a sacrifice that I speak about that, it, that, that one has to make in a, able to achieve goals in life and it has paid off for me because i have many accolades to my name you know i have i've won so many competitions i've traveled so many places i have been recognized um in so many places not only in antigua i've been recognized in barbados i've been recognized in new york city and you know so these are the things it it helps at the end of the day so i would not change anything johnson was yes it was expensive but i think is beneficial and it will continue to beneficial to be beneficial um, for me in the future because the also the the broad bands of chefs that that school have produced the alumni um, it's it's amazing so I would not change no I would not change anything I went through some very hard times um, to be honest um, I remember when I was in school there was a day Arthur and I we were walking back from Publix and we decided to check our, our account. And I remember we didn't have any money whatsoever. We had like $10 left in our account, you know? So, you know, those are the, the things that make you a better person. Those are the things that um, help you in life to understand and appreciate the basics and the small things. And lo and behold, I think it was maybe a day or two later, you know, we were able to get some money in, you know? So these are the things that make you a better person. I would say. One of the things you had put here was how did you survive while attending university? Was that one of those examples? Exactly. Um, that's definitely one of the examples. Um, you had to survive at all costs. Um, we used to go on small, small jobs um, with our professors. Um, Chef Nawid used to take us on some. Um, Chef Brian, um, the late Chef Brian, um, very great very great um, professor, may his soul continue to rest in peace. He took us on many private um, functions also. Chef Brandenburg, <laughs> Brandy, <laughs> that's what we call it, you know, Drew. <laughs> he really helped us also um, when it, he taught us ice carving and he used to go to his shop and learn a lot of things. So 
you know, these are persons that, 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 um, that helped us um, along the way. That's how we, you know, we survived. To be honest, we survived as a team. Again, it's all team effort because you can never do it by yourself. And that's another thing going into a kitchen. If you think that you can do it by yourself, you will fail. No matter how great of a chef you are, none of these, these Michelin starred chefs that we see and we praise every day, at the end of the day, they did not do it by themselves. They cannot do it by themselves. They had a sous chef. They had a junior sous chef that gave them ideas and helped them out. You know, so always think about the team. Don't think about yourself. Praise your team. Don't praise yourself. You know, these are small things that we did in university um, that helped us. Arthur, Mikhail, you know, Kimani, Akim. You know, we were a team. And we looked out for each other. I, I would give you that. That's what helped us, really. We looked out for each other. It was a great experience. Is there a question I should have asked that I didn't yet? Or is there anything that, I, you know, you'd w want to share at last minute things? Um, you could tell us, what is one thing that you wish you had known in advance before you went to culinary school? One thing that I wish that I would have known in advance. Whoa, that's a tough one. If maybe you were there and you're like, wow, I wish I had known that in advance. I wish I had known that. It might have helped. I'm thinking, but at the end of the day, I wish nothing because this is, these are the things that help you in life. So any challenges, th 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 those were challenges, challenges that I had in culinary school made me a better person. It made me, it made me push harder um, because that's something that I always said when I went to culinary school, I wanted to graduate with honors. So that's, that's another reason why I did not want to get anything less than a B plus average. So putting that in my mind, say, okay, I must graduate with honors. So I kept working hard, hard. I remember there was a time in your class, I had a B average for the, um, for the stimulation, for food costing. I, I vividly remember, and I did it over to try to get a better grade. And I remember emailing you about it. And to be honest, I actually saw the email um, recently. I'm like, look at this. I have a B average and I'm asking um, professor to do it over so that I could get a better grade. Um, so that, that was how I, th th that's how I used to think. Like, I just had to do well. I just had to do my best. I had to give it my all. I, I did not settle for Ds. I did not settle for C pluses because at the end of the day, if I settled for that, that means I would have been missing out information. And if I kept pushing, if I kept trying to push to get an A plus, I have to study to I have to study to get an A plus. I have to study the amount of work to get that A plus. And if I fall short, okay, fine, but it needs to be a minimum of a B plus. So it was just have to push. You just had to, you had to sacrifice sleepless nights. You had to sacrifice a lot of things, sacrifice going out and partying. Um, you just had to sacrifice so much, sacrifice being away from home. Uh, I've been away from home for six years. You know, I just recently came back. So you sacrifice family. You know, all of these things make you a better person. And I'm not speaking about being a chef. No, I'm speaking about being a person overall. You learn to appreciate things a lot better, right? Uh, as I said, I, I, all my money that I saved for seven years went straight to Johnson & Wales. So after I left Johnson & Wales, I started over. Would I change that? Of course not. Because maybe if it is I had the money already sitting down there or someone was paying for me or whatever the case may be, right? I wouldn't have cared that much. You know, I maybe would have settled for a C. Like, okay, it's a C. But I made that sacrifice. My parents made that sacrifice. You know, so I had to make sure I made myself proud. I had to make sure I made my parents proud. You persevered. You had perseverance. You had tenacity. You set a goal. You went after that goal and, you know, and you, 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 you weren't going to let things get in the way. Correct. And, and as a an professor, instructor, I love that because that just shows that any student that wants to better themselves and redo an assignment, I'm all for that because they're still hitting the objectives and they're going to learn each attempt they make at something. So I'm more than willing anytime that someone has that drive and wants to do it, do it. <laughs> Definitely. And, and, and I, I know in myself, I have that level, that drive. That drive, I, I have it. Um, you know, that's where I, I'm so successful today, right? And I don't owe, 
I don't owe my success to myself. I owe it to the persons that I have been in contact with, all my professors, all the chefs, all the persons that used to speak to me and root for me. At the end of the day, I owe it to them because, you know, we all, some persons think, oh, we can do it all by ourselves. No, you cannot. You need assistance. You need assistance. And um, I'm thankful. Put it that way. I'm very thankful because coming from the Caribbean, it's, it's very hard. And I'm sure you would know that it's very hard for us when we transition um, to the United States. It's a different culture. The money also, it's a lot higher. So 2.70 of the EC dollar is, is one US. So you can imagine, you know, how it is. So it's, it's very hard for us and we make a lot of sacrifices and you know, we, we, we try to make ourselves, our family, and also our instructors and the university as proud as can be because you don't want to go there and waste time. And that's another um, thing that I will encourage future persons that think to go to culinary school or just university in general. Do not go to university to, to waste time because you don't know if you're going to get back that time again. You get that opportunity the first time, take it, run with it. You make mistakes, fix it, get back up, run with it. But, you know, don't, don't, don't waste time. Don't waste money, you know. So that, that, that's something that I will encourage listeners. Please just be careful because <laughs> university can get you a bit carried away um, with all the partying and everything else. You know, we all go to university to get an education, to graduate, to get a degree. Stick to it. Good advice. Well, that is just about all the time we have for this episode. And I want to first thank you, Christopher, for coming on the show today and sharing your culinary school story with all of us. We really appreciate your time, your insight, and your honesty. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Oh, thank you. And uh, really enjoyed our chat. All right. Take care, Chef. Bye-bye. And a big thanks and appreciation also goes out to all of you, the listeners. We hope you enjoy the show and this episode. You all are a big part of this show, so please let us know what you think. Your comments are always welcome, and they help us in making the best show possible. You can email them to culinaryschoolstories at gmail.com. That's culinaryschoolstories at gmail.com. Or even leave us a voicemail at area code 207 835 1275. That's area code 207 835 1275. And if you like the show, we have a big ask of all of you, and that is to share the podcast with everyone you know and to give us a positive rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Okay, until our next culinary school story, take care and be well. Bye-bye. Culinary School Stories is a proud member of the Food Media Network. Culinary School Stories is a proud member of the Food Media Network.